What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu slash Android. In this video, we are going to build our first Hello World application. And that is very common to do when you are building your first app in a new programming language that you have never used before. And I guess that's the case for you because you're watching this video. So we're going to build this Hello World app and we're going to test it on our Android virtual device, which we have set up in the last video. So if you don't have Android Studio installed or your Android virtual device ready, definitely check out those two videos as well and check out the entire playlist because we're going to build a bunch of applications on this channel. So also hit the like and subscribe button if you don't want to miss out. So let's get started. So let's go to the main activity. You can either go to it from here and if you by accident closed it, for example, you can still find it in your app, Java, then the name of your package and then main activity. So you can see this is the name of the package that we have selected when we create the project. And you can also find that package name up here. So u.tutorials.myfirstapp. This just says that this file, all of the code that is in here, belongs to the package of eu.tutorials.myfirstapp. Then you find this import keyword. And this import keyword has three dots in it, which means there's something behind it. So you can click on it and then this pops up. You can see here Android X app compat dot app dot app compat activity, which is a library or a namespace, however you want to call it. Both words are fine, which basically means that there is a lot of code behind it and it allows us to use its functionality. So if we delete this line of code, then suddenly our program starts to not work anymore. So we get an error, you can see here, it's red underlined here, this main activity. So it doesn't understand what this override method does because, well, we never had set it up. So that's something that is set up in this app competitivity, which basically is a lot of code that somebody else wrote for us and we can now reuse in order to not have to write that code manually ourselves. So we should be thankful to them because they really save us a lot of time. So thanks a lot for doing that. Now we are using this app competitivity here again, you can see, and that is only possible because we have this import. Now the same goes for this bundle here. You can see saved instance bundle. Well, we're using this bundle code in our class main activity as well. So that's why we have these imports and we're going to add more imports later on, which will then allow us to use different kinds of code and functionality, which is very powerful. If you want to understand more what's behind this app competitivity, you can just hold your command key or control key and then click on to the name here you will find that it opens up this declaration for this file. You can see it's called appcompetactivity.java. So it's a Java file. It's not a Kotlin file. You can also see that by its structure. So the code is slightly differently written. So you have the access modifiers here everywhere. You don't even need to understand what that is at this point. So you can see there are hundreds of lines of code basically allowing us to use them. And then the same goes for this bundle. You can just click on to it and then you can, well, access it and make changes to it, but I'm not going to do that for now. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android Masterclass because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. So then this is the important part. This is basically where our own code starts. So we have our main activity, which is a class. So then we have this class keyword and we're going to look deeper into what a class is later on, but generally it's going to be the container for our code. It's going to hold our code and it will allow us to execute some code. So we call this class main activity and it has this colon here then app code compatibility, which basically just means that it inherits from app compatibility. And we're going to see what inheritance is later on once we get to object oriented programming. It would lead way too far for now. What's really important is that we have this onCreate method, which will be called once our main activity 
is going to be created. And by the way, an activity is just a screen. So if you have multiple screens in your application, for example, the login screen and then the profile screen and so forth, all of those would be different activities. And we're going to create multiple different activities later on when we create more complex applications. But that's what you just need to remember for now. Activity equals screen. And then we have this override function on create. So this is a fun, which means a function. This is not about having fun or something like that, even though you can have fun with functions. But this is our function, which is overridden on create. So basically, it just means there is some on create method inside of the amp compat activity, and we are overriding it with our own code. So we're just saying, okay, we're going to run our own code. Then there is a bundle passed here. That's something we're not going to cover for now. And the super method is called. So super on create saved instance, which just means that whatever op compat activity wants to execute by default in on create is being executed. And then comes the interesting part. That's where we actually can make changes. So this is going to be the set content view, which actually sets the content of the view. Who would have guessed it? And what we're saying here is please set the content of our layout activity main. And where do you find this file? You find it under r.layout.activityMain. So where is that? Well, R stands for resources. So if you go over here, you will find this rest folder, not the generated one, but the other one. And then you will find a folder called layout. And that's exactly where our activity main file is. So we're just saying, okay, set the view to have the contents of our activity main, which means that this is the XML file, which will be actually displayed on our application. So let's change that up a little bit. First of all, click on this hello world here. You can either click on it from the component tree here on the left hand side, just click on this text view, or you can access it directly via the designer view. So here, let's click on this hello world. And then on the right hand side in the attributes, you can go to declared attributes. Okay, so there are a bunch of different settings, you can go to common attributes to declared attributes and so forth. So I'm just going to go over to the declared attributes and we can declare the hello world to display something else. So here I'm just going to say hello Dennis and press enter. And you can see that now the text should say hello Dennis. We'll get a little exclamation mark, but we're going to ignore that for now. It would go too far at this point. We're going to see what that means later on. But now it just says hello Dennis. But I'm not very happy with that. I would like this to look a little different. I would like it to be bigger. So in order to change that, you can go over to your common attributes and you can go to text appearance. And here you can change, for example, the font family, if you want it to look differently. Here there are serif, black, medium, light, and so forth. You could change the typeface. But what I'm interested in is the text size. So I'm going to change that to 25 SP, for example. SP hereby stands for scale independent pixels, which just means that it's going to look more or less the same, no matter which device you're using, because pixels are different on each device. So let's say you have a big screen, then each pixel is going to be look bigger, right? But SP, what it tries to do is it tries to make it independent of the size of the screen or the amount of pixels that the screen has, this text should always look the same or more or less the same it will never be exactly the same. But here at the top, you can even select the device and you can see the DPI. So now if we look at it on a phone that has a different DPI, so let's say 560, for example, you can see the text still looks more or less the same. Okay, so I'm going to go back to pixel four, which is the device that we're using here at the top. So that's how the text is going to look like. Now let's run the application. So click on this button here at the top and see what's going to happen. And there we are. My first app says Hello Dennis. Now, of course, it shouldn't say Hello Dennis. In your case, I would like you to enter your own name here. Now you can, of course, also write something entirely differently, maybe even in your native language. If English isn't your native language, then just change that to whatever text you want to display and try it once again. With the common attributes here, for example, you could change the color as well if you don't want to use 
black you could re use red for example i really love the color red so change that rerun the application and then go over here and you will see that it says hello dennis in red now okay so that's pretty much it for this video we have set up our first own changes we understood what the main activity does and what all of this stuff more or less does even though we are going to go into a lot more depth into what is happening here so no worries if you don't understand what's up here the only thing that you needed to understand is that there are packages you can import different libraries that allow you to then use their code and we have this container which basically is going to take care of what we can see on the screen by setting the xml file that we have here that we can then edit and by the way if you want to jump to this file directly you can hold the control key click on it and it will jump to this activity main xml and just a very quick one we're not going to change anything there but this designer here is just one way of looking at this we're going to work a lot with the code and this is how the code is and we're going to see what all of that means later on in the course but you will probably already see it says hello dennis here it says that there is a certain text color which is this red and you see that there's a certain text size that we have defined and that is basically representing what we see right here all right so see you in the next video where we're going to create a people counter app